Hello, and welcome to the Get Local podcast. I'm Joanne Fowler, your host, and I'm so excited that you have decided to join us today. We have an amazing local nonprofit that I'm going to talk with you a little bit about today. We have Jordan Bannister. She is the league president of Upstate Roller Girl Evolution, and she's here today to talk to you about real relevant and resourceful information on running a nonprofit and share a little bit of information about her nonprofit. So good morning and welcome. We're so glad that you joined us today. Good morning, Joanne. Thank you for having me. You are welcome. Well, I'll tell you what, I think you're going to be one of the most interesting guests that we've had so far. <laughs> so I am excited to let our guests hear a little bit about what you do. So tell me a little bit about Upstate Roller Girl Evolution. Oh, there's a lot to tell. We're um, we're a women operated roller derby league uh, out of Easley, South Carolina. Uh, out of Easley, South Carolina. And how long have y'all been around? Uh, the team started in 2009. 2009. Mm-hmm. I know I was talking with you a little bit before we got started today, and I remember I'm older than you, unfortunately, <laughs> but I remember when I was a younger girl that roller derby was a huge thing. Mm-hmm. So did roller derby go away and you guys brought it back or has it always been there? It's always been there. Um, we've, we've just sort of kept it alive through fandom from the past and through encouraging other people to come and watch us. Oh, wow. So now I cannot imagine a roller derby nonprofit. So <laughs> how in the world did it all come about? How did how did it just start? Tell me all about it. We, I guess, you know, I, I, I'm not one of the founding members. Um, I've been a part of the team for about five years. Okay. Um, but I can I can pretty much sense that the way the organization came together was wanting to give local women the opportunity to try something new, to get physical, and to create kind of bonding and lasting relationships. We're we're a, more of a family than we are of a team. So oh. uh, <laughs> we've we've got a ton of like just silly uh, silly connections through our teams. We've got best friends. We've got relationships. We've got all kinds of stuff. Oh. Um, so our our guys, we're we're a family. Oh my gosh! So now nonprofit. So yes. you're raising money. What are you raising this money for? Uh, is it's to support our team, um, and we also support other organizations in our community. Okay. So um, each year we select other nonprofits to partner with as part of our 501c3 status. Um, we've done Habitat for Humanity in the past. We try mm-hmm. to kind of go all over the board, uh, and this year we've selected uh, Miss Dixie's Kitten Rescue. Oh. And uh, this year and last year we worked with the Period Project, offering uh, menstrual supplies to churches, homeless shelters, and uh, other other needy organizations that could could use these materials. Wow, I've never even heard of that organization either. So we have to reach out to them. But that is fantastic. So so you guys are raising money so that you can function as yes. a roller derby team. Mm-hmm. But then above that, money that comes in is able to go to another nonprofit. That's correct. What would you say your percentage of your funds that come in actually go into other ministries? Oh, let's see. Um, we I don't know the exact percentage uh, because we also donate our time. So so Habitat mm-hmm. didn't exactly need our funding they needed our volunteership gotcha. so um you know and the period project they don't really they, they could use our funds but they can also use physical materials gotcha um so it's not necessarily a hard line percentage mm-hmm. um but we, we do try to support at our maximum capacity and we have about 30 skaters um so if all of us you know can put in an hour if all of us can donate ten dollars or you know pieces pieces of our um our income from games mm. and stuff like that so who who are you skating against <laughs> um well uh this year we've skated against the smoke Mountain Roller Girls uh, mm. and uh, Hard Knocks out of Knoxville, Tennessee. Oh, wow. um, we're headed down to Muskogee in Hamilton County, Georgia, um, pretty soon to to play. Uh, gosh, I forgot their team. I guess it's the Muskogee Roller Girls. But oh my goodness. Um, so are you like like football? Do you have, you know, you're a 4A team or a 3A team, you know, or do, or is it just everybody's on the same level playing field? We go uh, sanctioned and unsanctioned. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we go, we operate off of an A, B and A, B level, like a combination mm-hmm. level. Uh, and cumulatively, our team, I would consider us A, B or B level. Um, but we're uh, we're actually really good at training up skaters. Wow. So uh, we pick out people. We, we'll teach you how to roller skate from the ground up if we need to do it. Or if you come in with balance or if you come in with other athletic skills, we can hone those and get you to play up to the A, B level with us. Now, I used to roller skate. And, you know, we, we I thought skating backwards was really cool. But, I, but I can't imagine. <laughs> that you, are you all doing tricks kind of like the globe globetrotters are doing on the basketball court? Or are you all just kind of 
skating and it's the physical part that's the most the better uh, skaters the better skaters are doing tricks doing um tricks. we we have we have uh gals probably about half my size who can mm-hmm. clear an apex and that's just a turn in the rink oh um gosh. where you just kind of jump over the corner and um you know some some of our stuff is pretty acrobatic the way that we hit people out of bounds or um you know I, I, we call it getting cleaned out um oh if gosh. you send someone out of bounds and you get to stay in it can look pretty cool <laughs> oh my gosh so what do your uniforms look like oh um most of us are in our uh, black and white or uh, black and blue tank tops. Our mm-hmm. colors are, are black and blue. Um, you have your number on the back. You have the Urge logo on the front. And um, we've got our armbands here. Um, mm-hmm. the, the bands are funny because uh, we were talking before the recording about uh, getting stuck in traffic. And <laughs> that's just what we call it um, when you get kind of in a big bundle of people and referees can't see you. So they need other ways to identify you uh, to get you pulled out in case you you know have a, an infraction or ah. something like that. So you can actually get penalties. You sure can. You I, sure can. You can. So, do you, so what kind of penalties do you get? Because now, see, remember, I remember years ago in roller derby, you know, the the knocking people out of the yes. ring and tripping people up and, you know, all of that, all that violence in the ring was, you know, it was a good sport back then. It is still a good sport and it's still violent, <laughs> um, but it is a lot safer than it used to be. So some of those penalties that you can get is a back block. We don't permit skaters to hit um, anywhere a sports bra would hit you. Uh-huh. You cannot make impact with a skater oh. uh, in the back just because it's incredibly dangerous. Mm-hmm. Um, you can also get forearm penalties. So there's no karate chopping my father's a huge roller derby fan and his his go-to coaching you know from the sidelines is get her with an elbow and he has he has big ideas about how much swinging you can do and you sure cannot do that oh my <laughs> so, god like, um, no no drop in elbows no choke oh. slams nothing nothing like oh maybe he was he was used to back so in it's not it's not wrestling no <laughs> so not. you can't you can't use your coming off the top rope you cannot to somebody like no you do in no metal folding chairs no um but chairs. we still do whips and that drives people crazy they're so well, you cool. hold each other's that's hand right. right and you mm-hmm. throw someone faster that's along. right because you oh. need to get your jammer out of traffic you need to get her out of trouble and a whip is the best way to be able to pull someone out and get her you know through and get those points oh my goodness it is so, so cool. now so how do you win so oh. how does your team win what is it how are points mm-hmm. taken oh, that kind of thing yeah. it's all point scoring so um when people ask if it's like football um are you the quarterback are you the receiver mm-hmm. um one of our gals is the ball essentially <laughs> <laughs> and she's called the jammer and uh, she wears a star on her helmet uh-huh. um, and your jammer needs to get through your defensive line, their defensive line and past another jammer. So there mm. will be two jammers and four blockers on each side. Okay. Um, oh, sorry, one jammer and four blockers on each team and okay. out at the same time. So once you surpass those bodies, that's how many points you get. And the more times you can go around and get through those blocking walls, the more points. So is there a time limit to the games or is there a lap, you know, you go so many laps and, or you score, once you score a certain amount of points. Uh, Jams are two minutes long. Okay. Um, So there, it feels, you think two minutes is very short. It is not though. (laughs) It is, it is forever. Uh, And games are about 30 minutes. And Mm -hmm. so those jams, you can score as many points as you, with with the same line and the same amalgamation of people you have in, in Mm -hmm. those two minutes. And then you can call it, you can decide not to go the full two minutes pull and swap Mm -hmm. um or you can go the full two and get as many points as possible wow so y'all have 30 people but there's a total of how many goes into the ring well i'd say um just at a time there are five five of us onto the track we have about 12 rostered skaters people who are safety qualified and ready to go out and trained Mm -hmm. with the rules uh and then like i said we're our 30 we're a really good training team so some of our skaters are still in development or still learning how to get up to that roster with us well it's kind of like a like a football team you Mm -hmm. know i have grandchildren grandchildren who are on football and you know sometimes they're on the field and sometimes they're on the bench right exactly you know? and but you need all of those people for yes. the practices before you actually go to the game so yes. they all play a part in the success and or oh, the failure of the absolutely. team right we 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 have a huge like we have a huge support network too so some of our skaters um are not interested in playing in the games with us mm-hmm. they want to uh we have uh, what are called nso's and their um uh, non-skating officials mm-hmm. so they'll be off skates but they're the ones who put the tape down on the track they're the ones who run our merchandise table and get us signed in for all of our safety documents like mm. those women and 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 their partners and their families they do an incredible amount of work for us and you think that a roller derby team is just the you know the kids scoring points mm-hmm. but we're a full team and our volunteers and even our fans are are, are part of our, oh, our whole organization. Great. Well, now, Jordan, you said you have 30. So, you know, what are your age range? I'm not going to tell you to tell me your age, but you, you, know, do you know, what is your youngest and what is your oldest skater? Um, some of our, we, we require you to be 18 to skate with us. That okay. one's the bottom line. Um, we have some gals, uh, Daphne just celebrated her 
31st birthday. She's oh. so I would consider her pretty young. Um, and we've even had we've had skater we have skaters in their 40s, skaters in their 50s. Wow. Um, a couple of years ago, we had a skater on our team who celebrated her 67th or 62nd birthday with us. Oh my gosh! Well, I'm gonna come watch, but I'm not gonna skate. <laughs> oh well, and that's 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 really all we're asking folks to do is just come and engage with us, yeah. meet us, and and you know like any any sports team and any fandom. We skate for them Mm -hmm. and we skate for each other. And uh, when it comes right down to it, we just we want our fans to to know each other in the streets and to see our logo and to see Mm -hmm. um, see the shirt and say, oh, my gosh, I just saw them play. They're incredible. Yeah. Um, And then they and as any fandom, you know, you can walk by someone and say, go Tigers. And then they uh, they can say it right back to you. And it's it's the same thing. And so with Urge, it's like feel it or fight it. That's our feel it or fight it. I love that. (laughs) So now you've got a uniform. You're wearing a tank top shorts. Yes. And then uh, you mentioned earlier safety gear. So what kind of safety gear do you guys have? Oh, we got head, shoulders, knees and toes. Um, (laughs) So you, you are required to wear a helmet. You're required to wear a mouth guard, mm-hmm. uh, elbow pads, um, or sorry, elbow pads, wrist guards, and knee pads. And mm-hmm. they all come in different varieties of ability to protect you. So you mm-hmm. can have these big bulky knee pads. If you, if you got knee troubles like me, um, <laughs> you can wear like, you know, your, your wrist guards that can become, you know, kind of very still or stable or more flexible depending mm-hmm. on how you use your body. Um, and we just ultimately want to protect each other and and the teams that we skate against. So you're not going to like your uh, downtown skating rink and mm-hmm. skating, right? You have your own practice rink. Mm-hmm. We are yeah. in our we are in our family rink. Um, so we're at uh, Roller Time Family Skate Center uh-huh. uh, in Easley, uh, seven nineteen Ross Avenue. If anybody was looking for looking for a neat place to go and skate with your family, we rent the rink uh, twice a week for practice, and then we rent it for games as well. So oh, wow. it's your community rink. Okay, um, that's fantastic. Uh, so you're uh, supporting local. Too. Oh, absolutely. And a friend of mine, um, I, I just you know, learned the other day that his parents met at that roller rink and they, they oh, still skate there together. Cool. So um, there are, it's, it is such a, we are in our hometown and in with, with our families and with our family. Yeah, and I don't think I mentioned earlier, but you guys are actually based in Easley, yes. correct? Yes. And then you said you do have, the upstate has one other team? Mm-hmm. Yes, uh, Greenville. They have a Greenville Thank team. You. And so what are your league time frame because like football you know you know mm-hmm. football is going to start at this time and it's going to kind of end at this time oh, do, yeah. do y'all do the same thing we do um so we take kind of an off season in the colder months uh mm-hmm. but our bout season it's it's just how you say game our, our bouts are um uh, in March and they go all the way to October. Um, uh-huh. and you know, other teams kind of shift within that bracket too. We all kind of play around the same time. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's really neat. Uh, Greenville has a Christmas, uh, a Christmas invitational, uh, that you don't have to be on their team to be a member of. You just sign up so that it gets girls from Fayetteville. It gets them from, you know, Spartanburg. We, we pulls us all kind of to their area. Mm. And, um, and we, when we skate for them at Christmas time. Yeah, I'm surprised that Spartanburg doesn't have a a team. They used to. They, they closed down to. after COVID. Oh, yeah. I tell you, COVID was really tough. Yeah. Well, well, speaking of COVID, let's take that into the nonprofit realm. You know, yeah. I've, I've had several guests come on that mm-hmm. are in the nonprofit arena, and um, a lot of them said when COVID hit, they mm-hmm. kind of struggled with their financial support or even their volunteer support. Yeah. Did you guys experience some of that as well? We did. Um, a lot of skaters chose to take a break. Some of us were out at our, I uh, was at my local tennis court, you know, working on jumps and trying to uh, kind of practice safely. So not with mm-hmm. other skaters, we would do outside meetups and, you know, run a couple of laps at the local park. But um, it was really hard to keep folks really dedicated to staying with us twice a week, um, mm-hmm. because if we're not skating, we're not a roller derby team. Right. <laughs> it's kind of it was really right. hard. Um, but we do have we like I said, we operate pretty closely, um, like as a family. And so all of our, uh, you know, all of our main skaters got together and were able to participate with us, even if we weren't on wheels or um you know, if, if it was just stretching or calisthenics, like we mm-hmm. still, we still tried to stay together. So do you make your money when you're, when you're raising funds, do you mm-hmm. make it from just donations from the community or mm-hmm. do you make it from when you go to these competitions? Do you get any of the money from the competitions or are y'all just paying to be in the competition? Usually not our away games. Um, mm-hmm. So we, we have merchandise, we have t-shirts. Um, we, we did a really great calendar last year. Um, so we, we make some of that money. You have in. a roller Derby girl calendar. Yes, ma'am. I'm April. <laughs> You're Miss April. <laughs> we we need to get those calendars out. I'm they're sure really they'll cute. be hot in the community. They are so cute. Well, welcome, Miss April. <laughs> <laughs> you just pretty much tell me what month you want to be, and I'll pitch a picture. Okay, there you go. <laughs> 
<laughs> but um, no, so we get to keep that merchandise, uh, yeah. that merchandise income. Okay. Um, donations, of course, uh, we have, like I said, we have sponsor skaters, so mm-hmm. you can be independently sponsored by your business or by someone in the community who wants to support you. Um, and, you know, well, we, we do our ticket sales, but we split some of it with the rink. And then, like I said, we turn it over for our rink rent um, mm-hmm. monthly. So, yeah. Do you ever just do a fundraiser where people can just come in mm-hmm. and, and see y'all skate and kind of see what you do and learn a little bit about it? Yes. And so every time we do any kind of fundraiser, we've been to breweries, we've been to uh, to bars and to restaurants and things like that uh, to do meet and greets so that we can sit down and talk to people uh, mm. and tell them what we do and they can meet us. That's the most important part is for them to know who we are. It's you know hard to have a fandom when, when you don't know who's even out there and who right. you're representing. Um, and when they come and talk to us and they do get to know what we do and what we offer – this is a very, very fun way to work out. This is a really good way to meet people. It's really hard for adults to kind of make connective friendships mm-hmm. just out at work. Um, so this is just another kind of hobby arena for for connectivity. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, through our fundraisers, we can tell them what we're up to. I can see that. So now what skates do y'all use? Because I know when I take my grandkids skating, they mm-hmm. always have two different skates that they can get. The regular skates and then they get, what's the other one? Um <laughs> I don't remember, but anyway, what kind of skates do y'all use? We're on quads is what we call them. So that's the ones with two wheels in the front and two wheels in the back. back. Do you have the big stopper in the front? We sure do. (laughs) And I I use mine. I I might overuse my stopper. You might overuse your stopper. (laughs) It's 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 April slowing down in the rain. That is correct. I'm going to put the brakes on. (laughs) You're going to put the brakes on. You're you're one of those safe skaters, right? Uh, Are you at the end of the whip so that you're, you know, you're back there in the back out of the... (laughs) I try. You're back Um, out of the mm -hmm. Uh, pileup. But I block and I jam, so... So, um, I'll, I, you know, I won't let you get by me. And then when it's my turn to jam, I'm pretty decent sized gal. So I I, want to see your schedule. I have got (laughs) to come out and see this. I'm so excited about what, about what you guys are doing. Mm -hmm. So who are, who are y'all's ideal, um, donors? Who are you looking for? Who, who, when you're out there talking to people and you tell them what you do, yeah. who do you, who are you finding that says, "Oh my gosh, I want to I want to be a part of this program." We want we want sports fans. We want people who understand what athleticism does to a community. Mm-hmm. We want people to cheer for us. We want people to support us. And in that way, like I said, we play for them. Yeah. Um, so we want we want more fans. We want more people who are interested in learning about a sport and or even know it or know it from a different time mm-hmm. and are curious and excited about finding out how it's different. Well, I, I think people are going to be really curious. I think one of the challenges you guys have is a lot of people don't know who you are yes uh they don't know that you exist hear it all the time (laughs) Uh, you know and i think the more people know who you are there that curiosity i like that word Mm -hmm. i think there will be a lot of people who are curious uh, who may be older, yeah. who may want to come check it out. And then from the young side, I think people are tired of the same old sports. So how awesome to be 18 and to get involved in this and stay healthy Absolutely. and you know, do something really fun with a family, mm-hmm. you know, that camaraderie that comes with a team sport, I think. And our, you know, our team is, you know, pretty, pretty diverse in, in age and body type and, and everything. But um, they, other programs, Columbia has a heck of a juniors team. They start these babies down at 10 years old and oh, they wow. learn, they, they learn the rules. They, they get so good. And then when they get big enough, we call them farm fed. When they get big enough to come and play 18 and up, mm-hmm. they're kicking our butts <laughs> because they're they're so skilled from such a young age. Wow. But I think I'm thinking about it. Had I known that this was an opportunity or an option for me when I was 10 or 11, mm-hmm. I would have loved it. Oh, yeah. Because um, roller skating was really fun. And I just, uh, gen- general athletics would, you know, I played a bunch of sports. But mm-hmm. knowing about this one and knowing about, um, you know, being able to take a hit and being able to deliver a safe hit. Um is such an empowering thing. Well, I think skating has lasted generation over generation over generation. You know, like I said, I take my grandchildren to the skating rink a lot, mm-hmm. and there they have speed skaters. Oh, yeah. So is speed skaters a perfect transition if you're someone who's – because a lot of them skate very young, like you mm-hmm. said, five and six, but then they skate into, you know, 18. Oh, so absolutely. is that like a perfect transition from them to go from a speed skater to go to a roller derby It team? is a great transition. We have mm-hmm. a couple of, you know, professional roller derby players who have tra- who have who who use speed skating as a way to stay healthy for derby and mm-hmm. vice versa. Mm. Um, cause if she's too fast, you can't catch her. Yeah. <laughs> like if she's, if, if uh, we call them jukey. So if they're able to jump around on those toe stops mm-hmm. and get around quickly, that's more points. That's more time. That's, you know, ah. that's running up the scoreboard for somebody. And we find a lot of crossover from hockey and mm-hmm. uh, soccer ah, where you, see that. where you develop a lot of endurance and your balance. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, as I mentioned, we'll just teach you how to play from nowhere. If you, mm. if you're not generally athletic, we can help you because derby, Knee, derby requires a lot of different kind of body types and a lot of different kind of strength. Mm-hmm. Um, so we'll just teach you how to do it, and we'll find the best place for you. Now, I noticed on your website that you have um, you have boot camps. You do. So you actually train people. 
people. So tell me a little bit about your boot camps. How does that work? Oh, our boot camps are actually really, really fun. So you'll take vets, uh, veteran skaters like me and like the rest of our rostered lineup, and we'll partner you with one or two of the newbie skaters, the mm -hmm. fresh meat. Um, and we'll teach you how to stop, how to, you know, we'll teach you all about your gear. Um, and those, we usually like to try off season boot camps. So we've got one coming up in November and then we, we try to shoot for two a year so we ah. could make one, you know, earlier as well. But, well, and I'm not sure when our, um, your podcast is actually going to drop, but you were telling me you're going to be in the Christmas parade. Yes. So I'm so excited about that. So how are y'all, what are y'all going to do in the Christmas parade? You're going to ride a float? Oh, you're yeah. going to skate on a float? You're going to walk? What we're going to skate beside our float, which is, of course, if you're looking for us, you're looking for the big blue roller skate and, um, and the, and the oh only women gosh. on wheels. So oh. um, we're giving candy and we're, we're usually dressed with Christmas theme, but, um, and we give out our recruitment cards at the, at the parade too. So um, it's always, it's always such a great compliment. Like we skate up to somebody or you, or you check in and you say, you know how to skate? You look like you, you know look like you skate. want to join a roller derby team, and it's this like amazing compliment for I think for women who maybe aren't expecting that kind of compliment uh -huh. to come from another strong looking woman yeah. to be like you, mother of two, look like you ought to come and see us. Oh my gosh! Because it's such a you know it, it's such a unifying thing. So empowering, I think. Yes. You know, to be able to get out there because a lot of times you think of men being in that physical mm -hmm. realm, but you don't yeah. really think of women, you know, women are the cheer cheerleaders on the <laughs> sideline, you know, yeah. or they're the ice skaters that you yep. see in the Olympics. Um, but to have women in the rink with yep. that power and control and it is, uh, I just so think it's spectacular. Yeah. I think it really is spectacular. I think that's a great word <laughs> for it. Well, tell me what, I mean, obviously roller derby in itself makes you guys unique, but mm -hmm. you know, you're looking at you versus these other teams that you're competing against. Mm -hmm. What, what makes the easily team stand out? Oh, uh, it's, it's our connection to each other. Um, we'll help you move. We'll help you change a tire. We, um, you know, we, we really support each other in a unique way. And I'm sure other teams have these same relationships, mm -hmm. but just, you know, being inside of being inside of those friendships and those, those connections mm -hmm. want to make sure that you're okay. Um, you took a hard fall at practice last night. Are you all right? That's tomorrow morning checking in on your friend and on uh. your sister. And that's, um, it's that's how we do it. Well, Jordan, I, I, I think that's so important in 2023. Mm -hmm. um, I think, you know, going through COVID, so many people became isolated. Oh, and yeah. I think a lot of people forgot how to build relationships mm -hmm. and how important relationships really are. Yes. Um, and and a lot of times just even communicating, you know, a lot of people don't talk on the phone anymore. It's mm -hmm. all about social media and sure. to get women together, supporting other women. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm going to go back and use words you used earlier. I think that's spectacular. I, I think it's much needed. Yeah. And um, and you stay healthy at the same time, right? Absolutely. So I think that really sets you apart from somebody else. Mm -hmm. So tell me a little bit about what are some of the struggles that as a nonprofit you guys have have had to overcome? Well, definitely exposure uh, and and definitely funding. They're classic. They're classic nonprofit issues. Um, you know, we they're everyone's facing their own different struggles in the same kind of kind of realm people mm -hmm. they have to we have to find our right audience we have to find our right um you know make that connectivity we have mm -hmm. to find our sponsors that make sense with us and who and who support what we're doing mm -hmm. um and then you know the struggle the, the struggle um for that exposure uh we don't we don't have the we don't have the money to do a big you know billboard we don't have the cash to do um you know commercials on television so of mm -hmm. course people don't know we're right there right um so now we're we're really operating through word of mouth we're um you know bring somebody new to your game um if you you know if you skate in a, if you're a, a if you work in a big company and you skate with us, invite everybody from work to come and watch you because oh, yeah. it's wild. People want to come and see you and they want to support you. I but. mean, what a team to me, I'm just thinking ahead, you know, as I go out and, mm -hmm. and I do business coaching, but you know, what a team event yeah. to be able to take your team, you're a small business owner mm -hmm. and you've got maybe five or six employees to say, we're going mm -hmm. to the roller derby tonight, yep. you know, to just take them all out kind of as a team event. I think that'd be a lot of fun yeah. and, and, uh, and unique. You once, know? once you watch it for a second, um, the rules become a little less complicated and, uh, you know, it seems it seems chaotic you just it's so fast and everyone's working so hard and if you're new to the game and you're just exposed to it you go what is going on <laughs> <laughs> but once you get the hang of it um it's really fascinating and you and you kind of understand plays and you understand mm -hmm. you know so how long would it, how long would a game last so if i'm bringing my team my mm -hmm. my sales team out for this event how long it, would i expect to be at your event uh we have 30 minute halves um and so it will probably probably be out there it's an eternity it feels <laughs> like a very very long time <laughs> but uh but yeah so i'd say a, a little over an hour 
a little over an hour. Mm-hmm. So your greatest challenges right now is funding and, mm-hmm. and really exposure. marketing exposure, just getting yeah. the word out about who you guys are. Yeah. So what what type of donations do you guys look for? I know earlier you said sometimes you collect mm-hmm. items for the nonprofit that you're mm-hmm. that you're serving for, but you know, what what is needed mm-hmm. every month? I mean what what are y'all looking for? Uh well, you know, financial support is it, it always helps every nonprofit, not just us. If it's the way that you can give and it's the way that you can support an organization, it's definitely going to be financial. Mm-hmm. Um, but as, as you said, if we needed, if, we're, if this month we're doing a can drive, we want you to come in with a bag of cans as part of your ticket and mm-hmm. come in and support what we're supporting. Right. Um, so it's, you know, that the best way to keep track of that and about how, how you know, we're operating in the community is to follow our Facebook page mm-hmm. um, and, to, and to look for us on our website. So now you've been there five years. Mm-hmm. So what what is one obstacle? I want you to encourage our listeners today who mm-hmm. may be running a nonprofit yeah. or maybe considering a nonprofit. What is one tr- struggle that you would say in the five years that you've been there that you really was faced with, but mm-hmm. you saw that you was able to overcome it? Oh, um, the, I, I actually really appreciate this question. Can I look at the camera? Yeah, for sure. Under no circumstances are you to give up when you really believe in something in your team, in your organization. If you believe in what you're doing, the best way to do that is to find those teammates and to find other people who support that and then uh, live inside of the diversity. We mm. have girls who can, um, we, we have designers, we have engineers, we have really handy and crafty gals on our team. And you have no idea what it means to not have to be just one person who has to be responsible for everything. We really do split what you know what we need mm-hmm. and that's the best way nonprofit structure wise to diversify and to share the load and uh we we're a really good example of that about how we have our financial you know our financial mm-hmm. gals we have our marketing gals we have people who succeed and who excel in, in mm-hmm. certain skills and um and we utilize that well, I think nonprofits are always going to struggle, mm-hmm. um, and it's really about you know battling your way to the top to get the funding sure. that you need. But mm-hmm. I think every nonprofit that is out there is a needed nonprofit, mm-hmm. and um, I, I appreciate you encouraging people because I'm gonna tell you, I, I think nonprofit sometimes is harder yes. than a for profit because with a for profit you're selling widgets mm-hmm. and you're able to say you know give me your money and, and here's your in widget in exchange for this thing, right? And, and with a nonprofit you're saying. Mm-hmm. It, Sometimes you're not going to see a widget, right. <laughs> but you're going to see us help someone, you right. know, whether you're helping the cats or you're helping, mm-hmm. you know, the churches or the communities who need the female items. I yeah. mean, all of those things are given back to your community, Absolutely. but you can't do those without the dollars. Exactly. It's not quantifiable. It's yeah. not, you cannot have this one item in exchange for this, yeah. this amount of money. And if everybody who's in a nonprofit quits because it gets tough, mm-hmm. um, then what happens to our community? Sure, because our communities and our community needs those nonprofits. Absolutely. How can and how can we support each other? So, yeah. um, so I think that was that was wonderful, and thank you for looking in the camera sure, and, no, and sharing <laughs> that as well. So, all right. So I have um, I have a surprise question. Yeah. <laughs> I always ask this at the end of every show, okay. um, and I don't tell you what it is, so you have to give me a uh, on the spot answer. Okay. So if you could have one superpower, only one. Oh. What would it be and why? Oh boy, um, I did, and I don't, I, I don't want to use my powers for evil, but uh, uh, but super strength would come in very handy during games. Uh, through the games, right? Because in the very in the moment where you kind of get caught up and you're trying to break through the line, just a little bit of extra heft and a little bit of extra um, superpower uh, would help me break through those. Would lines. Help you break through and mm-hmm. win, maybe get some more points for oh, the yeah. team, right? Yeah, so that you guys sure. can win. So that you guys can win in the end. Listen, I. I could sit and talk to you all day long. I think this is extremely interesting. I am thrilled that you took the time to come on and yeah. see me today. I'm glad I caught you in your off season so that you had time to come <laughs> talk with us today. Uh, I would like for our listeners to support you. So mm-hmm. tell me, how, how can they reach you? What is the best way that they can find out about your team, give you some money, volunteer? Mm-hmm. All of our resources are on our website, and that's upstaterollergirlevolution.com. That's our whole name. Um, you can find us on Facebook. We're on Instagram, and we mostly clown around on Instagram. So if you want to <laughs> laugh at us or if you want to be silly with us and celebrate birthdays with us, Instagram is going to be where you go for that. Oh, but, fantastic. Um, but, uh, 
like I said, all of that, all of that's on our website, our uh, 501c3 status, a way to donate, our partner organizations. That was, um, of course, the Period Project and Miss Dixie's Kitten Rescue. Mm-hmm. And uh, and you'll also find we have a Meet the Skaters page. So you'll be able to see all of us and, oh. you know, pick your favorites. And, and, and then sign up for boot camp. Us. And sign up for our boot camp. We have, we have <laughs> yeah. our contact info on there. Um, and you just reach out to our ILC or, or, or one of our one of our board members and say, I want to come and join you at practice. Mm. It doesn't even have to come down to being at boot camp with us just drop by on a wednesday um we're uh we're usually at the rink uh mondays and wednesdays from seven to nine uh we have a drop-in fee for skaters who just want to pop in we have all the gear that you need so please don't feel like you have to come in with a whole bag full of stuff we have it in every size we have it in every smell (laughs) but but, um but we want people to come and join us and and listen if they want to skate and they can't mm -hmm. skate and easily Mm -hmm. then you can help connect them with with uh roller derby skaters in their area absolutely we are we have a we have a huge network of teams people that we've skated with we love Greenville and we love Columbia. We're all over the place. So um, if, if someone is looking for a resource and it may just be too far of a drive or just, just you know, a little bit out of out of their range, mm. um, we can get you the right place. And you said they can donate on your website. They sure can. Okay. We need you guys to donate on their website. So you heard it here today. We are so thankful. Jordan Bannister, who is the league president with Upstate Roller Girl Evolution. We are so excited that you came today. And uh, I want to get you back when your season starts back up for Absolutely. sure. So we're going to ask you to come back in. Hey, we are recording today uh, live here at 864 Sound Studio. I call it studio. It's their studio. Uh, It's 864 Sound in Greenville, South Carolina. And uh, Brandon Higginbotham is the owner. Brandon does a lot of stuff here at the studio. They do original music production, sound design, voiceovers, podcasting, audio repair, mixing, mastering, and live sound, and so much more. He is amazing. If you have any of those needs, you definitely need to reach out uh, to Brandon here at 864 Sound. And uh, I'm so glad that you joined us today. I hope that you receive some awesome information from Jordan, and we hope that you will follow us, like us, share the podcast, call Get Local. We've got tons of other services we provide. We love to find these little hidden jewels uh, like we found today with um, Upstate Roller Girl Evolution. Thank you so much for joining us and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.